my history is uh, German. My ancestors came over from Germany. They were all blacksmiths, uh, my ancestor and his brothers, and listed on the ship's manifest in 1738. So we can trace it to at least that point as a line of blacksmiths. I would have to say that I was sort of finding an outlet. I was looking for what fit my both vision and, um, and my skill set. Um, textiles just did not allow me to express it. So it's a very flat medium to me. Um, I love the feel of textiles, but they didn't allow me to do the large scale kind of things that I wanted to do. Um, but I really found my, uh, found my footing when I got deeply into metalwork. Part of my work is certainly inspired by what I see. You know, take a look around this metal shop right now. There are bare trees, and, and that is certainly an influence in, uh, in my larger sculptural pieces. Um, the other whimsical stuff, it just depends on what kind of mood you're in. You know, you need a little fun, you can't be serious all the time, and you don't want to do just representational stuff. You want to do something that's a little bit, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit off, a little bit, uh, a little bit funky. Really, this is just about creating a space where people can create. Come here and do things, express yourself. Um, and it's all of the dirty things, the, uh, the messy, muddy, clay-covered, um, glass shard-filled, um, spark-filled, blacksmithy kind of stuff, any of that, the glass, metal, and pottery that, that you want to explore, this is a good place to do it. And um, it's a, a nice, safe space to do it, and that's where our, you know why we created it, where and why we ended up here, because because of that a desire to do what we wanted to do, and then we opened it up to to others. You know, we have several other potters that work out of here in season. We have a number of other glass people that work out of here, and like I said, once things start rolling, the season comes around, there'll be a couple other metal guys back in here with me. I have been constantly growing. My first metal sculptures were just a couple of feet tall, you know, and ranged um, in size. But the the space was limiting at one time, and every time I would create something a little bit larger, a little bit more um, more difficult, more complicated, I found the need to expand the, the shop. If you take a look around this building, there. Is a series of growth spurts that's uh, really in five major phases. So each one of those was um, was because of a need to make larger, more expressive pieces. That's what all this growth is about, and it's partly because what's inside just needs to get out. I sort of have a thing for the antique machines. Um, I also know that they. Uh, are very reliable. They were never made to be disposable. The big Bradley power hammer was built in the 20s. It was designed to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day for hundreds of years. So there's a collection of, uh, of antiques that are both beautiful and functional. And that's, that's what a lot of it is for me, is the beauty of them. There are curves and, um, and shapes to it that make that, these machines attractive. They are not just blocky tools. They are works of art in and of themselves.